everybody, how's it going? I'm Jason Berkman for Jason Berkman Photography, coming at you from Austin, Texas, by way of Los Angeles, California. And today, we're going to talk about an amazing lens that we all love. It is the 23mm F2 by Fujifilm. This is an incredible lens. Now, if you saw my last video, which was incredibly popular, probably one of my most popular videos, <laughs> you would know that the 35 millimeter f 1.4 by sigma for canon was my favorite lens of all time then i left canon and now the 16 millimeter f 1.4 by fujifilm is by far my favorite lens ever why because it has so much character doesn't necessarily mean by that everything that i shoot i'm going to want to shoot with the 16 millimeter but it's just amazing what's going to happen to that 35 millimeter focal length that is when i go to my trusty 23 millimeter f2 this thing is an amazing little lens. It's tiny, it's weather resistant. It's a metal construction, but it's it's small. It's so sharp, beautifully constructed, unobtrusive when it's, especially when it's on this little bad boy, it's amazing. I actually had a couple of friends come out here from Los Angeles to Austin, Texas uh, to visit, which is kind of weird uh, when California's on fire. Why not just go on a vacation? So they came out and um, we hung out for the day and I was able to take some photos and shots with them. I did some cityscapes. I did some street photography. I did some uh, architectural photography. I did a little bit of nature. I just did pretty much a little bit of everything with this thing. Now this is the lens that you're going to find on Fujifilm's X100V and X100F. 23 millimeter F2 is going to be fixed to both of those cameras, which is great. It kind of gives you a good understanding of why would they want to do that? Fix a lens? You can't, you can only have one focal length? Yes, because it's versatile. You could do so many things with it. F2 lets in just enough light to get some shallow depth of field, but therein lies the problem for me. I loved the 35 millimeter F1.4 for my Canon system because that 1.4 allowed me to get a much more shallow depth of field. So using the 35 millimeter for portrait stuff is just amazing because I love the bokeh. Bokehlicious bokeh. Bokehlicious bokeh. There's something to be said for it. I know uh, all of the young f new photographers are supposed to like the bokeh. I will never stop loving bokeh. I love separation. I love the milky bokehlicious bokeh like backgrounds. That is my thing. I'm into it. I love I love it. Don't ask me to stop loving bokeh. If you were to ask me which one of these 23 millimeters should I get? The 20 millimeter f2 or the 23 millimeter f1.4? The 20 millimeter f2 or the 20 three millimeter f 1.4 if you're doing a lot of portraits go for the f 1.4 i know it's a good lens it's much larger than this thing this thing is tiny look it's much heavier than this thing i know that and much more expensive than this thing all around this is a really great lens i know that you can get a lot more of that bokeh if you have a more separate uh, more separation from your background if you're doing a portrait you want your subject to be closer to you and further away from the background that's how you're going to get a little bit more bokeh out of it um, the close focus distance on this thing is pretty darn good. I did some nature stuff, some take, I took some pictures of like some flowers and stuff like that when I was at the river walk and it worked actually really good. Not as good as the 16 millimeter 1.4, but uh, I mean, I got some cool photos, great, uh, some cool photos that I liked with that close focus that with this 23 millimeter the usability of this thing the form factor is so great i'm gonna actually put this on my xt3 right now here's my xt3 i'm gonna put why do i have to talk like this while i'm while i'm doing this i have no idea look at this little thing it's so unassuming and so unobtrusive that when i take this out on the street no one really cares that i'm shooting with this thing was i, I was looking up there i'm sorry i'm sorry guys you're there. I'm here. You're there. 
Okay, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you, XH1 people. I love shooting with this thing. It's, you know, it's all, it's not as small as the X100V, obviously, but pretty dang small. Compact. Amazing. This thing's great. The, the clickies. We all like the clickies. Do we always have to talk about clickies? Yes. It has a cool little lens hood. This lens hood is kind of interesting. It's strange. As long as it works, I don't care how funky it is. It kind of stays out of the way, which I like. Like everything with this lens, it's compact, easy to use, easy to get around. It's light, unassuming, unobtrusive, out of the way. It just does its job. Quality of the image, you're going to get a really clean and uh, sharp image out of this thing and you are going to get uh, be able to get some bokeh you have this thing at five you know 3.5 you're going to get some really sharp beautiful i'm sorry did i say 3.5 <laughs> Uh, that's not what I meant. I'm in 5.6. 5.6 is kind of the sweet spot with this lens. If I'm shooting 5.6, shooting cityscapes or stuff like that, it's going to be very clean and beautiful, crisp, and have a lot of character to it. Video. 35 millimeter. I'm shooting on the SLR Magic 25 millimeter right now. The 23 millimeter, 25 millimeter range is going to be so amazing, so beautiful for video. Autofocus on this lens, did I not even speak about the autofocus? The autofocus on this lens is perfect. It's amazing. Uh, it's not as loud as the 35 millimeter, thank God. It looks great, it looks great. I've used this to, uh, for some interview videos that I've done, some YouTube stuff I've done, some corporate stuff that I've done for video and it's worked really well, especially using this little bad boy on a gimbal is amazing because it's light, it can move around, you can get a lot of different shots that you can't with uh, maybe the 18 to 55, which is also another lens, we'll talk about that one in another video. Also the price, if you're looking at the price of this bad boy, you're looking at 350. Did I not look up the price for this little bastard? See, that's the great thing about being able to cut this in and out is because I just looked it up at Adorama, it's uh, $339, KEH is about $400. So you're looking about $350 to $400 for this lens. That is pretty amazing. I've bought lenses for a lot more than that. I can go out with this thing for a whole day and not even complain for one minute about what I'm doing with this lens. What can I say? The 23 millimeter F2 is a gem. Now, if you're gonna use this for portraits, you wanna get that F1.4. It's gonna be much more expensive. If you don't have the money for the F1.4, this is not gonna be shabby. You're gonna be able to use this for portraits. It's if you want to not have to worry as much about low light performance, not have to worry as much about trying to play with your subject and distance between your background and all that stuff and you just want to open that thing up and get some really great bokeh you're gonna have to spend money to get that extra 1.4 aperture with the 23 millimeter 1.4 to sum it up this thing is worth every single penny i put a bunch of pictures of my little experience with my friends in Austin in this video so you can see what I did in one day running around with this thing, getting all kinds of different shots. I hope you like this video. If you have any questions or wanna leave any comments, do it in the section below. Please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and hit that notification bell if you so please. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.